Who Stole Mona Lisa? Who Stole Mona Lisa? by Ruthie Knapp. Here they come, people with up hair, people with down hair, people with skirts, people with shirts, people with hats and spats, boots and suits. They are coming to stare at me, Mona Lisa. Shh, let's listen to the guide. This is the Mona Lisa, the mighty Mona Lisa, the greatest painting in the world. She is famous for her mysterious smile. It is a growing smile or is it a knowing smile? A shy smile or a sly smile? Now look at her eyes. They follow you wherever you go. Everyone moves. Some walk to the left, some walk to the right, some stoop low, some stand on their tippy toes. Children turn sideways and sometimes upside down to peek through their legs. Is that the Mona Lisa, they ask? Is she real? Tall people poke their noses up close. I can smell their breath, garlic, coffee, cigars. They all stare at me. Shh, here's the guide again. Mona Lisa's name was Lisa Girardini. She was Italian. She married when she was 16. Mona Lisa means my lady in Italian. Mona Lisa got tired posing for her portrait. When she squirmed, the painter told her, be still. If she dozed, he tickled her nose with a paintbrush. If she scratched, he asked if she had ants in her pants. When Mona was moody, he hired musicians and clowns to amuse her. Leonardo da Vinci is the artist who painted me. It took him four years Leonardo loved me. He looked at me while he ate pasta. He would not travel without me. He said I was his masterpiece. I was famous because Leonardo was famous. Fans jammed into his studio to watch him paint. Sometimes he set off colored smoke bombs to please them. Ooh, ah, amazing, they said. Leonardo was a sculptor, an architect, an inventor, and an engineer. He drew designs of helicopters, parachutes, tanks, and a robot. People heard he wrote backward, Dracob. How clever is that? People heard he loved animals. They had seen him buy an animal in cages at the market, only to set them free. And people saw that he was an amazing painter. Soon I was the most famous painting in Europe. I was famous for being famous. A French king named Francis I invited Leonardo to paint in his court, and the two men became friends. After Leonardo died, I was given to King Francis, who admired me as he feasted on frog legs and wine. I stayed in France for many years with many different kings, two named Francis, three named Henry, one named Charles, and four Louis. Finally, a French emperor named Napoleon got me, and Napoleon hung me in his bedroom. And he looked at me as he dusted the diamonds in his crown. One day, he decided to give me to the Louvre Museum in Paris, where I could be seen by the whole entire world. At the museum, I became world famous. Day after day, crowds came to see me. Day after day, a man with a mustache came to look at me too. One hot night in August, I heard footsteps. The man with the mustache came alone in the dark. He measured me, 21 inches wide by 30 inches tall. Then he tiptoed away. Early the next morning, I heard footsteps again. The man with the mustache was back. This time, he was wearing a white workman's smock. He looked behind him. Then he raised both his hands and he ripped me off the wall. Ouch! First time, I lurched sideways, then upside down. 
I felt sick. My veil slid over one eye. A honey cake fell from my lap. He hid me under his white smock. I could feel his heartbeat. Da dum, da dum. He tiptoed to a dark place and pried me from my frame. Eek! His shoes squeaked as he sneaked out of the museum. The next day, the museum went wild. Where was the Mona Lisa? Where was the most famous painting in the world? Did someone hide her? They looked for me in the closets and corners. They looked for me in dustbins and vents. They found a fingerprint and my frame in the stairwell. Aha, she must be in the photo studio, but I was not. Was I in the baker's oven down the road? Too hot. In the hippo's hay at the zoo? Too hot. In the cheese shop? Too smelly. Detectives searched boats and beaches, freight trains and farms. The museum posted a reward for my return. They asked fortune tellers to track me down. Still, people came to see no Mona Lisa. Millions of people. They came from far. People from Giza. People from, Giza. People from New York and Peking. Some of them cried. One of them fainted with grief. All that was left of me was a piece of space on the wall. People still came. They came to see the hooks where I hung. They wanted to see where I wasn't. They wrote me poems and songs and they left me love letters. The man with the mustache loved me too. He said I reminded him of someone special. He looked at me every meal over apples, eggs, trout, cake, prunes, and piglet snout. He looked at me on rainy days and on snowy days and during summer squalls. He looked at me when he bathed. He looked at me when he shaved. He looked at me for two years. I was tired of the man with the mustache. I missed my wall. I missed people staring. I missed children looking sideways and upside down. One day, the man with the mustache heard the police searching for me nearby. He grabbed me and stuck me under the stove and I could hardly breathe. I thought of the kings and their beautiful palaces. I thought of the museum and my place on its wall. I remembered when I was the great Mona Lisa. Now, instead of crowds, I saw cobwebs. Instead of admirers, I saw ants. The man with the mustache decided it was not safe to keep me in Paris. He wrapped me in a red cloth and he stuffed me in a trunk and took me back to Italy by train. The train screeched around bends and roared through tunnels. Heavy things bumped my trunk as the man with the mustache growled and cursed. When we arrived in Italy, he tried to sell me, but people recognized me and they called the police. The man with the mustache was sent to jail, and I was booked on the express train back to Paris, where I was returned to my wall at the museum. The museum went wild and everyone was talking. Mona Lisa is back. People brought me flowers and cried with joy and they lit fireworks. Did I look the same? Was I hurt? People lined the streets to see me. A thou 100,000 people came to visit me on my first day back. Suddenly I was fashionable. Women tried to smile at, like me and wore cosmetics to color their skin like mine. Now you know why I am smiling. I am happy to see you. I am happy to be back where I belong. I am happy to be me, Mona Lisa. But mine is a knowing smile. It has stored secrets for more than 500 years, the secrets of artists and kings. A hot night in August and a mustache, it is a smile that knows many secrets, but now you do, so do you. Shh, listen to the guide, she is still talking about me. Mona Lisa.